Hello there. So the idea of this video is to introduce you to the box. But before I do that, I have to introduce you to the concept of a smart pointer. So let's get started. So in your Rustachian or overall development career, you've most probably come across the term pointers or references. When we talk about them in Rust, we're pretty much referring to all those instances in which we use the ampersand sign. Nice, so that's a pointer, but what makes a pointer smart? The distinguishing factor between a smart pointer and a pointer is the fact that their structs that besides acting like a pointer contain additional metadata or capabilities and two smart pointers own the data they point to. They don't only borrow like pointers do. Now, I told you that, that smart pointers are structs, or usually structs. So if they are, what distinguishes them from a day-to-day -day struct and to make them a smart pointer struct? And the answer to that is that smart pointers are structs that implement the DRAF and drop traits. Now get ready to have your mind blown. Uh, the DRAF trait is what allows an instance of a smart pointer struct to behave like a reference so that the code that works with pointers can also work with smart pointers. Does that remind you of something? Let's make a call back to chapter 4.3 of the Rust book where it says, a more experienced Rustachian would write the signature shown in listing 4.9 instead because it allows to use the same function of both ampersand string values and ampersand str values. Okay, so instead of writing this, you should write this. Okay, now again, let's make a callback to a video called What is Ownership, one of my earlier videos, where I drew the following representation of a string. Okay, as you can see, this was my best attempt at a drawing representation of the string struct. So, a string is a struct that has metadata, such as length and capacity, and we can interchangeably use it with ampersand str. Yep, string is a smart pointer. We've been using smart pointers all this time. And anyway, now that we got that out of the way, uh, let's talk about the box. A box is a smart pointer that allows you to store data on the heap rather than the stack. Now again, let's make a call back to that what is ownership video. There, I introduced you to the concept uh, of the heap and the stack and told you that things that are on the stack must have a known fixed size, while on the heap the space is allocated according to need. Now, what if we need to use something that we don't know the size of compile time. That's the case with recursive types. Let's create a linked list looking structure. If you don't know what a linked list is, is pretty much a data structure where we have several nodes and each node contains some data and then points to the next, okay? so. That's what it looks like. Ignore the head and the tail. Just let's con just concentrate on this part. Now, an idea to implement this is to do something like so. We can create an enum. Let's call it list. And instead of here, we'll create a node which will store an i32 and another list and none. Okay. And to use it, we would do something like say let ll for linked list, and we'll say node one, node two, node three, and then none. Okay, nice. So this is a recursive type because the type itself is included in one of the variants. So like right here, you, have, you see that list is part of the definition of what the list type originally is. So if we run this code as is, we would get an error that says, 
let's just cargo run it. We'll get an error saying that recursive type has infinite size. Okay, so we know there's this error and we can read it, but why is this the case? So the thing is, the compiler must know at compile time. Oh, I just noticed this is sort of small. So let, me, let me make it bigger. Hopefully, you can see it better this way. So, thing is, the compiler must know at compile time how much size to allocate for every type. So let's play the role of the compiler in here. If we go to this list type, we see that we'll need size for an i32 and a list. Hmm. How much space does a list need? Let's take a look. The list needs uh, space for an i32 and a list. Hmm. Let's see how much space an, a list needs. A list needs space for an i32. And you see what's happening? Okay. So we're getting stuck in sort of this like infinite loop and we don't know how much space to allocate. So the solution, as you can probably guess, is to use a box. Um, by putting list inside of a box like so, the compiler now knows how much size it needs because it knows the size of the box pointer. Now, just for demonstration, um, let's actually create this list. So it would be something like box new, or rather let's do this so that it's quicker. There, there, and then we'll say box new. And we have three boxes, so we'll need three parentheses. Okay. And now if we run this code, so let's cargo run it. We get errors. <laughs> oh, okay, it's out of scope. Let's just use list all because otherwise I would have to say list colon colon node. I don't want to do that. Let's just do this. And now if we cargo run it again, we forgot a semicolon. And if we cargo run it again, voila, the code compiles. All right, I think that's about it uh, from me for this video. I'm hoping to make uploads more constant and hopefully post uh, every Sunday or so. So hopefully this video being uh, shorter won't be too bad. Um, anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.